Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to perhaps a concept you haven't heard that often of or a, an approach rather, which you haven't been exposed to too much in the world of very, very basic rhythm. How to count rhythm, how to feel rhythm, how to write rhythm, how to notate rhythm, how to read it, blah, blah, blah. So... In this lesson, we are not going to be very piano heavy. We are not going to be dependent on the piano too much. However, we will try a few clapping patterns. I will try and show you a few things on the piano. But essentially, this is a video on how you can read rhythms and how you can learn from the rhythm pattern, how you can combo it together and so on and so forth. And this entire lesson will have exercises which I've manually written because I think that's kind of cool to manually write down your work. And even if I had notated it, I wouldn't really know what pitch to give it. So I just thought I'll handwrite it rhythmically and I think that makes more sense. So you could read the notation. And the main focus with our rhythmic journey in this lesson is going to be to approach rhythm from a binary perspective. So what I mean by binary is essentially the two options in music when we exist as musicians, which is to play or not to play. That is the question. So when we play a note, it's considered a note. It could be whichever note we have on the keyboard or whichever instrument. When we don't play, it's considered a rest. And notes and rests have different symbols, right? You have the notes which are semi-breves, uh, and then you have a semi brief rest. Then you have a minim, you have a minim rest. You have a quaver and you have a quaver rest. Oh, I forgot crotchets, which is before that. You have a crotchet and a crotchet rest. Semi quavers, then you have the dotted notes, you have the dotted rests as well. So for every note, there's an equivalent rest. So when you read an entire bar of music or when you read a piece of music, it becomes a bit daunting to go bar by bar or section by section. So in this lesson, the binary strategy will help you lock into your rhythm pattern beat by beat. And then you combine the beats together to create a bar and then that becomes a pattern. Then you have many bars coming together and uh, creating some awesome music. So follow this entire thing along. However, there will be exercises waiting for you on our Patreon page to practice all this stuff. So do consider heading over to Patreon and uh, get yourself a copy of the notes right away. And you can also consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for regular notifications, especially now as I'm going to make a follow-up YouTube tutorial exclusively for exercises on the Quaver divisions which is dividing by two triplet permutations dividing by three and semi quaver permutations or 16th note permutations dividing by four let's move forward now the amount of division we go into the beat will yield different binary options or different binary permutations and why i keep saying binary because the permutations are going to be to play or not to play yes no or in computer class terms zero or one right which a computer tends to understand so the zero or the x or the rest or the one or the play so to get the permutations first of all we look at the beat division level let's start with dividing the beat into two units if the beats are divided into two units it could be equal or swung straight or swing it will be two raised to two so that's four possibilities or four things you can do on a beat by beat basis. So what are the four possibilities? You can do tick tick, which is two quavers. You could write it down as two quavers beamed together. Also, I've made a note of it saying it as one one. So that's the computer analogy. And then you can do tick X. Now tick X can be a bit visually weird. So you could look at tick X either as a single crotchet held on or held over for that remaining subdivision or you could look at it as a quaver with a quaver rest so that would be one zero in computer analogy then you have x tick that is don't play and play so don't play on the on beat or the down beat and play at the off beat so x tick that would be a quaver rest and a quaver okay that's zero one in computer analogy and then you have everyone's favorite at least my favorite which is don't play don't play don't play at the on beat and don't play at the off beat take a pillow and get a nap if you wish and that would be represented with a crotchet rest or a 
well, a quarter note rest, which lasts for an entire beat of us doing absolutely nothing. But counting that nothing, we can't be chilling out without counting, remember. So that will be zero, zero in computer analogy. You may also think, what do I do if I want to develop a two-beat phrase? So a two-beat phrase, well, you could have a minim, obviously. You could also now use the subdivision strategy since I'm dividing by two. And first of all, when we divide by two, the process generally when we count it is to have an on beat, which is one, and then the off beat, which usually we focus our attention by saying and. So one and two and three and four and would allow us to count the subdivision well. You could also say it in Indian terms if you wish. You can say tak, 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 tak. Tuck, and so on and so forth. You could have an exciting combo of a dotted crotchet meeting up with a quaver. So a dotted crotchet will last for one and a half counts while a quaver will last for half a count. So a dotted crotchet would be dot with a crotchet plus and the next right after that you'll have a quaver with the tail. You can also jumble that up and do a quaver and then a dotted crotchet. That's also pretty cool. So you get what I'm saying, right? You can grow these symbols in a beat by beat manner, in a two beat structure, in a three beat structure and the eventually finish off an entire bar or two bars of music. You can use tied notes, you can use a lot of things. But the binary idea is rooted towards giving you the guidance of having things which you play and don't play and just making it simple you just have four options really if you have to do just two quavers beam together it's going to be one two three four one and you see i'm playing both so on the piano that's two quavers i'm moving my head in crotchets quaver 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 now if i do crotchet a quarter note one two Three. My head is moving the same. I am still counting one and two and three and four and, but I'm not playing both the divisions. I'm just playing one, two, three, four. Now one and two and three. That could also work. This is a quaver rest with a quaver or an eighth note rest with an eighth note, depending on what you call it. One and two and three and four and one and two. And, and then, of course, my favorite one two, three, four. You do absolutely nothing. So these are all your eighth note permutations. Now, how did we get four? Two raised to n, where n is the division level of an integer. The integer will tell you how much you're dividing. So n could also be one. So then two power one will be two. And what are the two options when you don't divide? You have a crotchet and you have a crotchet rest. Rather limited options. You get the idea. So two raised to two, also known as two into two, you could say two twos are four. So moving on to the world of triplets, let's see what triplets have to offer. So with triplets, what I like to do is to divide them into two categories, the trivial category and what I call as the groovy category or the category which makes it sound very Indian and very folk-like or very dancey in nature. Not that the trivial won't make you dance, it's quite groovy, but the groovy one will really make you dance. So the trivials are going to be, first of all, it's triplets. So two raised to n, what is n now? Triplet, three, two power three, not two into three, two power three. Two power three is two into two into two, which equals to eight. So we count triplets as one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. So there are three spaces which we can fill in each beat. And then the question is to play or not to play. That is the question. Two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a. Okay. So what are the trivial options? First of all, all the three triplets. That is ta 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 ta. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a. Rather obvious, dividing by three, so you can get a nice arpeggio going perhaps. What about dividing by three but not playing the divisions? That will end up being like a crotchet or a quarter note. One, two. So in your head there is three, but you're playing, you're executing just the pulse, two, three. But in your head, you probably will be doing three and a four and a one and a two. And then everyone's favorite, nothing, one, two, triplet, three, triplet, four, triplet, one, triplet. So we, I also like to add one more to the trivial, which is swinging. So that will go, 
One and a two. So if you count one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a so one and a. So you're not hitting the end. So you could notate it as either a quaver, a quaver rest, and a quaver and triplets. I guess because they evolved later in the world of notation, you would need to put a bracket and write three under that, indicating it's a triplet. Okay. So three quavers. Under that, you write a three. And what about swing? You put a quaver, you put a quaver rest, then you put another quaver, beam the quavers, and then under that, you need to gang up a three to call them a triplet. And that would generally be called a swing, which would be one and a two and a three and a four and a one. There we go. Swing, very popular, which is why I put it in the trivial. Swing ta ta na ta 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 one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and there we go ba 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 and now coming to the groovy ones which are the other permutations again two part three is eight so you have that whole one 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 or zero 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 one zero one zero zero one one system or one zero zero then what one zero one then one one zero one 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 finally quite cool I still remember that after my school days the groovy options would be the rem remaining permutations the first one I'm writing there as tick tick x or play play don't play so that'll be one and two and three and no a uh, one and a uh, two and a uh, three and a uh, four and a uh. Count the year, but don't play the year. Okay. Okay. Then we will do the X tick tick, which will be don't play, play, play. So that'll be my left hand is indicating the crotchet or the pulse. My head is also moving with the pulse, so you can follow. One, two, three, four, one, right. Ta. Mm -hmm. Triplet, triplet, triplet. Ta, 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 ta. So we've covered the 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 first and the third of the triplet beats. That will be swing, and we've covered first and second. We've covered no one but two and three. What about the others? What if we have two missing and one there? So that'll be one and a two, a three, a four, a one and a two, a three, a four. There we go. The very last one, the a. Uh. What I like to play a lot is the end of the beat, which is one and two and three and four. That one. So. These may not be as groovy as we can make them. So to do that, you combine the groovies with each other or it's easiest for your brain to start counting the trivials with the groovy. So if I take trivial uh, tick, tick, tick meets up with tick, tick, X. Let's see how that sounds. Ending with two crotchets for fun. Or two rests. Versus only triplets would be now that's tick 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 w meets up with tick tick x right so I can also do maybe trivial uh, the trivial one all in with uh, x tick tick let's see how that sounds Or maybe just fool around, you know. Okay, now 
moving forward, let's do the next subdivision. What's the next subdivision? We've divided by two, meaning we get four permutations. We divide by three, meaning we'll get eight permutations. Dividing by four, what's that going to be? Two power four. That's two into two into two into two. That's a lot. That's 16. So 16 rhythm patterns now coming up. First of all, let's look at all the trivials. The trivials would be 1000 0, 0, 0 in computer analogy, which would just pretty much be a, a crotchet. Two, three, four. Now, for 16th notes, first of all, let's take a small step back and count it as 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a 1E e and a 2E e and a 3. So that gives you access, unique access to all of those subdivisions. 1E e and a, all of them feel very different. 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a versus 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a versus 1E e and a 2 it just gives you a different electrical impulse, I guess, in your in your body. And that's what the maths does. It's just purely maths. So the rhythm gets you to feel the music in a completely different way, depending on which division or which subdivision you decide to hit. So the trivials, the trivial ones which I've listed there are 1E e and a 2E e and a 3, rather easy. Then I have another trivial, which is just eighth notes. That's in computer literature, that would be 1010, right? There we go. Then another trivial would be all in. 2E and a 3E and a. Let's get a nice arpeggio going. Then you could do everyone's favorite, which is nothing. So that's your crotchet refs, rest. Another trivial. Then another trivial would be at the <clears throat> only at the E's and the Er's, which will be on E. <clears throat> so you're targeting only the E's and the Er's. Another trivial which I've marked out by computer analogy 0010 so that you can just think of it as a quaver rest with a quaver which we've discussed earlier in the dividing by two system right and the and it but you in your mind you still want to count one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a right so those are the trivials uh, play only at the uh, one Play at the one and the and. Play at all four. Don't play. Then only at the E's and the R's. So. Only at the and. One and two. Okay. So I've categorized the groovy stuff into three groups this time, unlike the triplets where it was just one column. With the semi-quaver grooviness, you're going to look at three in, one out and group them. Then you're going to look at two in, two out. And then you're going to look at one in and three out, if that makes sense. So in and out meaning note and rest. So if you do three in, three out, the first binary permutation which I have for you is one zero one one. So that'll be a gallop. Dunk taga 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 dunk That's one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a Love that gallop. Then we have one one zero one, which is ta da ta da ta da ta da the one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e. So then what about one 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 zero three in and one out? The last one out. P 
people think this is a triplet but it's essentially just a group of three notes you don't call that a musical triplet a musical triplet is what we learned earlier it's dividing the beat into three this is just one e and in uh, with notes and then the a uh, no notes one e and a two e and and then we could do a off on 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 so there we go as always you combine the groovy stuff together it's going to be amazing and this is how you build a phrase if you ask me that's a phrase for you what did i do there i combined the first one under the groovy category which is one e and a two e and a nothing at the e i combined that with the 1110 So that can be an arpeggio it could also be something melodic What am I doing here I'm doing I'm not playing at the 1 and then the next beat I'm uh, playing at the 1 e and and not playing at the a uh. Okay, I have a few more groovies for you. Not, not me. The maths gives you more of the groovies for you. So the next uh, set of four would be where you play two and you don't play two. So let's start with one zero zero one, which I think is uh, quite cool. So that will be. One e and a two e and a three and very good for some riffs. Or you could do one one zero zero. And always combine it with other rhythms, you know. But this is one e, one e. Then you go zero zero one one. Baba ikatara 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 ikatara. Then we have zero one one zero. it gets a bit tricky so it may also be a nice strategy on the piano at least to maybe keep a pulse going in one hand and try to then play the rhythm in the other hand and again i'm not swinging people may think this is swing it's not it's one e and a two very straight that swing The margin is very very small for the musician's head and for the mat. So the difference between a semiquaver which I showed you now, a semiquaver pattern which is the difference between that and a triplet which is so small Uh, you know, and if you math it out, it'll be barely a hundred milliseconds or lesser if you take about seventy-five or eighty BPM. But that small fraction or a few milliseconds difference by the barest of margins affects the real world of music lovers or even dancers. A dancer would completely change their dance style or their dance genre based on these small phenomena, these small. diversions of the beats so to speak so i'll do 1001 again then we have 1100 trying to put the pulse in my left hand If you go by the maths you have one more thing which I put under trivial or rather two more things I put under trivial where you play two and don't play two that's 1010 which are two quavers I already showed you that and then we have 1001 may look trivial but not so easy to play you have to be attentive of those e's and us 
And lastly, there are two perm two more permutations left, which is zero 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 one. That's only the a. Uh. Or only the e. You could just staccato it or legato it. Legatoing it would end up you would end up writing it as a dotted quaver. Okay, so that's how we've notated it there for your reference. So in this lesson, we've covered eighth note permutations. Two par two equals four, and eighth notes, by the way. Are eight notes in a bar of four, where you divide by two. So that gets very technical. So don't think eighth notes have any hardcore maths associated with them. It's just called an eighth note. I sometimes just like to call it a quaver, so that prevents me from thinking of the maths of an eighth note, which is a bit weird to digest uh, for most people. So you have quavers. Two par two, four permutations. You have triplets. Two par three gives you eight permutations. There, I move some to the trivial category, some to the groovy category. Trivial means obvious, easy, mundane, run of the mill, whatever you want to call it. Groovy is the one which one which really brings out the division of the beat in all its beauty. And then we divide by four, which is two to the power four, gives you sixteen permutations. And again, we divide it trivial and groovy. Groovy has different permutations, of course. So hopefully, you found the lesson useful and clear in terms of what can I do in a beat. These are pretty much all the division levels you'll have in music. I've covered them all. And for variety, you can always swing some of these. You can do one and two and verses one and two. And three, you're swinging the and or one e and two e and, or you can swing these divisions as well. That means move the and a little bit later, move the e and the a uh a little bit offset from the perfection spot, so to speak. So what I'd like to do for this lesson as a follow up, I don't want to just make this very conceptual, which it was, and I hope you got the concept. But I also want to follow this up with some proper rhythm counting strategies and some proper rhythm exercises for you, which I've divided in a very sequential manner. I start with eighth notes, then I do eighth notes, of course, in tiers of easiness to most difficult. With dotted notes and tied notes and stuff, then I do triplets with a lot of permutations, combining triplets with eighth notes as well. Then I do uh, ah quarter notes and eighth note triplets are covered, including uh, quicker triplets. So we'll check that out as well. Then we are going to do semi quavers and all the semi quaver permutations. So there's a lot of exercises which will be waiting for you right now if you want to practice it on our Patreon page. It will give you all our handwritten notes where I've. Also, come up with all the exercises. You can start practicing that on your own. And there's one huge bonus of being a patron member: being you can send me your work as well, especially in the fifteen dollar and the thirteen dollar subscriptions or the higher tiers. You can connect with me. You can interact with me literally through WhatsApp and send me your recording, send me your work from time to time. So that'll be really cool to actually see all of you people. Uh, while you do my exercises, I'll be uh, and also connect with you personally. That'll be a lot of fun for me, right, guys? So over to the next video. Then hope you found this lesson useful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for regular notifications. Especially if you're new to our channel, or if you've been a member watching. Please hit that button right now. And one main reason is you won't lose track of the next video, which is going to be very much related to this particular video. So onward, then. Thanks a ton for your support. Thanks a ton for watching the video thus far. Cheers, and catch you in the next one.